Okay, I'm, a, I'm excited about this teaching. I'm always excited about something about God, right? Um, you know, my, my desire as, a, as an apostle, as a prophet of God, is to bring you guys into a deeper relationship with the Lord, to covet and want a deeper relationship with God. Does that make sense? And I think that, um, I thank God for all the things that he does, the manifestation that he does here. But I think one of the biggest things about me, if you know me personally, is that I, I, my biggest thing is walking in love and the character of God. Amen. And, um, and I want to encourage you guys to, uh, so I'm hoping this teaching encourages you guys to want to have a deeper walk with, with the Lord. Okay. More of a sacrificial walk, more consistent walk, more of a love walk with God, where God can grow you in these things. Okay. And so today I want to talk about the, the conscious, the consciousness of the spirit. Okay. And what I mean by that is what, what would life look like if I really allowed the mind of Christ to take over my life? Does that make sense? I want to give you the behind the scenes of what my life looks like when I allow the Lord to take over my mind. Does, does that make sense? And I want to help you understand some things, why Jesus sees things one way and the world sees it a different way, okay? Yeah, okay, so stand with me, guys. Because I, I, I want to pray for you guys, and I really want you guys to receive what's being said. So try not to be distracted. Be focused, okay? Because this is really important. And, and uh, this is for your spiritual life, what I'm sharing with you today, okay? And I'm sharing part of what helps me become who I am and how God does what he does, okay? Amen. So, Father, I thank you right now for today. Lord, I, I pray that your people will get this revelation, they will receive it, and they will walk in the light of it, God. Lord, I know that you're giving me this to share with your people here today, Father. Lord, in light of everything that you do here and manifest in your presence, God, and, and healing and all that you do, God. But I thank you that you've taken these things, Father, that you've shown me. And you've allowed me to reveal this to your people, Father God. To draw them deeper in intimacy, Father God. To, get, to let them understand what else is in their utility belt that you've given them, Father. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So, Father, I bless them here today. So, Father, I just come against every distraction. Father, every hindrance. Father, everything that would, that would rob them of this revelation from you, Father. I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you right now, God, that they will produce a hundredfold return, Father God, from what's being sown in them today, Father. So, Father, I pray that their hearts are receptive, their minds are open. And Father, your word says, those who hunger and thirst should be filled, Lord. So, God, I pray that those who are truly hungry and thirsty, God, that you will pour out on them today, Lord. Thank you, Father. I bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all have a seat. Thank y'all. All right, so sorry about the minus today. We lost our, our key guy to put the scriptures up, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go through it. So, you know, Jesus did this without all the monitors and stuff, right? <laughs> there was a time none of this was here when Jesus was doing this for thousands of people, right? So we don't want to call it offenses today, guys, okay? But I really want you to hear what I'm saying and understand this because I, you know, the Lord uh, told me to share this with you guys, and I want to share that with you guys, okay, to help you. God wants you guys living a life of victory. He don't want you just waiting around, sitting, things going to be some magical day. He's already given you that. Amen? And you can live in victory in any area of your life, any time of the day, any time of the year. I promise you, it's a reality. It's a reality. And I'm going to share that with you today, okay? Praise God. Okay. All right. So when we're talking about uh, the conscience of the Spirit, and again, what I'm talking about is the having the mind of Christ. Who's heard about the mind of Christ? Who's heard about that? So what do you know about the mind of Christ? It, it's in you. Okay, pass it is in you. Okay, who knows? It's, it's, it, I, I, I teach discussion style, guys, so it's okay if you guys to talk to me. Huh? We're supposed to have the mind of Christ? What does that mean, Wayne? We're supposed to. We need to ask for it. You believe that? We need to ask for that? You do? Right, in your conscience, right? But when you receive Christ your Lord and Savior, you have the mind of Christ, right? You, have, you receive the spirit. I know what you're saying. You have to renew your, your, your physical mind, but your spirit has been renewed. You have the recreated spirit has been in you. You have everything that Christ is in your spirit, right? Okay, who else? What is the mind of Christ? An intentional, what's that called? Okay, who has something else? Thinking the way Jesus thought, okay? Anything else? 
Acting the way he acted. Okay. Anything else? Don, what you got, Don? Your beliefs determine your behavior. It's really good. It's really good. Anyone else? Fruit of spirit. That's really good. Pastor Anthony, what you think, sir? Okay. 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 Anyone else is good? Yes, Frederico. Being kingdom minded. Good. Yes, woman of God. Come stand up and tell them that. Come on. Stand up and tell them that. Come on. I know. I know. It's all right. Your sister didn't warn you about me this year. Uh-huh. Right. Amen. Come on. You can't show the Father. Huh? Jesus in us. Huh? And we have the mind of Christ. Y'all get it for our sister. Amen. What you got, Denise? Okay. Amen. Right? Surrender, right? It's all those things you guys mentioned, right? But what is the life like that looks like? We, we observe it. Right? So when I'm talking about the conscious of the spirit, I'm not talking about Christmas and Easter. <laughs> People wear Christmas and Easter, right? I'm not talking about that kind of awareness and, and conscious of God, right? We love Christmas and Easter, but, you know, it's not the only two days of the year that God, we need to honor and, and pay homage to God, right? A lot of people do. But, you know, last time I talked two weeks ago, and uh, y'all get it for Brother Brad, who did an amazing job last week. Didn't he preach? Um, but two weeks ago, I talked about the spirit of the world. I was teaching on the spirit of the world, how there are a lot of Christians who are carnal because they deal with the spirit of the world. They're not demonic, but they, they deal with the spirit of the world. And these are people who struggle with doing the, the things of God. They have a hard time. They struggle. They're not demonic people. They're just, they're just where everything they reason to do is, is worldly based, right? So the, when it comes to following God for them, they feel like, okay, if I got to give up money or I don't know what that looks like, or so I don't know if I can trust God and does that mean people just do whatever they want to me? They observe it from a very carnal place, so they stay stuck. They stay double-minded. Does that make sense? And so I'm, I want to help you guys who are still on the fence who are walking wholeheartedly with God to, to put the other foot in, okay, and to do that. Because it, it, it's so important that you, you get off the fence when it comes to God. He said, let your cold be cold and your hot be hot, right? Let, me, well, let your yes be yes and your no be no, right? And anything in between comes from the enemy. Amen. Amen. Okay. So in first Corinthians, uh, chapter two, verse 16. Okay. We're going to first Corinthians chapter two, verse 16. And I'll read it. It says, who can know the Lord's thoughts? Interesting, right? Who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. It says we already have it. We have it. You have the mind of Christ. Did you know that? Did you know that? That's it. So most people believe that Christianity is a religion. It's observed as a religion in the world, but we know that it's not a religion. What is Christianity? Uh, what is Christianity? Way of life, what is Christianity, Lisa? Kingdom, what else? It's a relationship with God. That's what it is, right? It's a relationship with God, right? Okay, so all right, so who understands salvation? Who understands the plan of salvation? Who understands that? Who knows the plan of salvation? How do, how do we become redeemed in, in the eyes of God? How do we become God's family? How does that happen? Believe what, woman of God? Believe in Jesus, right? And so when you believe in Jesus, what happens? Okay, and what does say, being saved mean? Okay, eternal life, save from your sins, right? So what Jesus did for us was a twofold thing. Okay, I'm gonna explain that to you. Uh, let's see, Brady, come up here.
Okay, so so let's so let's say for instance Brady is us, right? He was not saved, unredeemed, just walking around, you know, just living to die and go to hell, right? He's like, what? <laughs> And so when God did that for us, he, when, when he made the, what you said, Mama Pam, you, you talked about what Jesus did when we believe in him, right? So when he believes in Jesus, in that instance, right, he finished his sins, he said, okay, Lord, I believe in my heart, I on that you were God raised from the dead and you are the son of God, right? And I, and I ask you, my Lord, to save me, right? And he, he does that. So in that moment, his spirit is recreated, okay? His, his, his human spirit is now redeemed. Now the imprint of the uh, spirit of God is, is dwelling in him now. Now, he still has the, the mindset of the, of the old man, right? And, he's, and he doesn't physically change him. You may see his countenance change, but he is, but in his spirit, his spirit is being recreated, okay? And his new life is living in him. Amen? Praise God. Okay, so, and this is called, this is called a doctrine of substitution. You ever heard of that? It's, 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 it started back in the book of uh, Genesis when Adam and Eve fell. God started substituting the life for sin. Does that make sense? It's called a doctrine of substitution. So God just didn't, re Jesus, he just didn't redeem us, right? Jesus, the word said Jesus came, we have life and have it what? More abundantly. So he didn't just pay for our sins, right? He gave us also what? A new life. See, most people stop with, Oh, okay, he's forgiving my sins, so I'm good. Well, that's why the old, the old sacrifice didn't hold up, because it, it, it didn't recreate them. It just wiped their, it gave them a clean slate, so they messed up again. Does that make sense? And Jesus was sacrificial, man, so he was sacrificed, right? But he didn't, God did more than just slay him for the sins of all mankind. He gave him a life, a superior life, a, a recreated life, a new life. That's what you got when you got in Christ. He's not just your sins forgiven, but you have the recreated life spirit of God living in you. Do you understand that? Uh, Y'all? Yeah. And why am I still struggling? Why am I still? I'm going to explain that to you. Because you live in sense bank. What you got, Pastor? You getting fired up over there? Praise <laughs> God. Uh huh. Mm. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, y'all give this okay. Let's so. yeah. <laughs> move y'all, does it? Yeah, he got healed. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 21, we're going to go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, okay? It's, all right, going to NLT verse. It says, for God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sins, so that we could be made right with God through Christ, right? So when Jesus died, the Bible says, he who descended also ascended. So what happened was Jesus went down to the depths of hell. So when Jesus uh, died, and he, when, when Brady accepted that, that promise of their atonement, God is not, no longer holding his sin against him. And that's why Jesus had to go down to hell, so Brady wouldn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go to hell? No. no. Jesus went for you, so you wouldn't have to. But somebody had to go to hell. What is going on with y'all today? <laughs> this is exciting stuff. You know? Do you see? He went so you wouldn't have to. Right? All right. So, so we have to go to hell. All right? And so, so we're going to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. This is so exciting. So pay attention to this. Because I'm, I'm going to show you what actually happened when Jesus went down there. Okay? Do you know what happened when he went down to hell? I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay? All right, so uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 through 10, uh, ESV version. It says, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Listen to that. Grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. 
Okay, therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. So there were people in hell waiting to hear the gospel, who died waiting to hear the message of Christ, who didn't get to hear it. Jesus told the disciples, there were many people, many kings, many great people wanting to hear and see what y'all see. Bless are y'all. So he had to go down there, not only to deal with Satan, but to set those people who were waiting for his arrival who heard the gospel from, genera from Genesis all the way up until that time. There were people waiting, praying, and they died waiting on Jesus to come. Believing the, the, the writings of the prophets. Because they were revealing about the Messiah. Isaiah, they were telling about the Messiah. Moses, he said, God's going to raise a, 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 someone like me from Uncle Brandon like me. He meant Jesus. Way back then. Do you see? And there were people, generation after generation, just dying, waiting for his revival, waiting for his kingdom, waiting for him, waiting for him. And then the disciples and those people at the time got to see him visit. And he told them that. He said, blessed are you. Because many people want to wait for their long time. Do you see? Amazing. Right? So he had, he had to go make do with those promises. He said about Lazarus, he said, oh, this is not unto death. Lazarus died. But he said it wasn't unto death. Sleep. He still redeemed that promise. Even when death came, he said, uh-uh, come out, Lazarus. <laughs> God, <laughs> come on, say it again, man of God. Come on, did Jesus lie? No. Do you see? So where is your faith? God, you gotta understand this. You have to understand this. He said it's not unto death, but he died. But he never sinned. So who was lying? The situation or Jesus? The situation! I am the truth. All right. <laughs> Back to the scriptures. I'm about to run out of here, Pastor. I'm about to run out of here. I am about to run out of here, Pastor Anthony. <laughs> Praise God. And it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. And when you are a pastor, an apostle, a prophet, a banisher, teacher, or any other, other ministry of helps or gifts or anything, you are a gift sent from God. You don't have a gift. You are a gift yourself. It's an honor to be called of God. No matter where he called you. It's an honor, because he selected you for that. God, so good. And in verse 9, it says, in saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he, he had also descended into the lower regions of the earth, so Jesus went to hell. Okay? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all heavens that he may feel all things. Okay? All right, so what happened when Jesus went down to hell was, so we, this is our Jesus now, all right? So it was like, oh, it was like, Satan was like, all right, Jesus here, he called every principality, every dominion. There was probably nobody being possessed during that time because Jesus was in hell, right? Oh, you don't believe me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. This is the English Revised Version. It says, having put off from himself the principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them, and it. He went down to the kingdom of darkness and showed out. And they were holding them down. They were all over him. And he just, they all got off of him. He shook them all off. All of hell fell that night. That's what he did for you. You don't serve a weak, pathetic, little soft savior. 
he, de he disarmed all of hell by himself. And then he took the people Satan was holding in captivity out with him. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, New King James Version. Now see, bro. <laughs> Jumping all over Brady. Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 18, New King James Version. It says, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. I have them. I took them. He went down there, he beat all of them up and then took the keys off the stage. Dust his feet off and said, come on, y'all, let's go. That's what's living in you. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? See, that's why I get excited. Christ in me, the hope of what? Glory. There's no defeat. You got to get this. You got to understand this. It's true. It's true. You got to understand your salvation. He did more than just cleanse your sins. He gave you a, a new life, a superior life. A Satan life that you dominate Satan in everything you do. The Bible says you're not made of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. Come on. That's living in you. And you got the better version. You got the risen Savior living in you. They couldn't even deal and do anything with the servant. But you got the risen King, the King of Kings, Lord's Lord, living in you. That's why you'll do greater works. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Satan hates me. Hates me. Because I got it. I understand. Do you see? And, I, and this same mind is in you. Do you understand? You can change anything. All things are possible to who what? Them who what? Believe. All things. That's everything. Do you see? Victory every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Acts uh, 13, 33, the King James Version, it's, it says when Jesus rose on the third day, right? And then, and now uh, I'm just paraphrasing Acts 13, 33. It says, thou art my son, this day have I begot thee. And this was from, uh, this has been a quote from uh, the Psalms about uh, what, what, what Jesus did, that he was the first of the begotten. So he also became a high priest, right? He was a high priest, interceding for us, you know, day and night. Jesus is always praying for you. He's always praying for you. Always praying for you. Do you understand that Jesus is praying for you all the time? <sighs> Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, New King James Verse. Second Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, who's in Christ? Stand up. Listen to this. Listen to this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things become new. It's a reality. It's true. Stop holding on to yesteryear and yesterday. It's not a fact. That's what it says. If anyone, who's in Christ? Who's in Christ? Then why are you still fretting and crying and complaining about yesterday? Who's in Christ? Then it's passed away. It's passed away. It's passed away. It's passed away. Listen to me. It's passed. Stop allowing what you see and what you feel to redefine what God says. That's your problem. That's your problem. That's your problem. 
You believe God until something changes. No, that's not faith. Paul said, what is hope is already seen is that really hope? No, it's not. You got to understand what's inside of you. You got to understand this. You have to. Or say he's going to have a field day with you. Playing soccer ball with your life. Your health, your family, your fine, everything. Because you don't understand. My people perish because of lack of what? Knowledge. Not because of the Satan. Because of knowledge. You don't know this. You don't live according to it. So you stay at the feet, not because God has chosen for you to, because you don't know. Your ignorance is what's keeping you bound. How can God give you his spirit, give you his life, give you his word, and you still live a life of defeat? It's not possible. It's not. Do you understand that? So let it pass away. Let it go. It has no bearings on you. The scripture tells that all things work together for the good. To them who what? And the what? That's each and every one of you. That's each and every one of you. Amen. Have a seat. Thank you. Amen. So what is in the mind of God? What is the plan of God? What is the desire of God? It, God's desire for us is to fulfill the plan and purpose which we were birthed for. Amen. And that's what I love about this ministry and what God has given me with is to help people understand their purpose and their cause and their destinies. I take great honor in it. It's a great privilege to do that for the Lord. Amen. But that's God's dream for you. God wants you to fulfill his dream. His dream is you fulfilling your purpose while you were here. That's his dream. That's why he gave you everything to be successful. Amen. So, you know, in Matthew chapter 8, verse uh, 24 to 25, we know that's the story when Jesus rebuked the winds and the waves, right? Yeah, I mean, who remembers that story of the boat, right? And you remember how Jesus was asleep and the water was coming in the boat, <laughs> in this pillow, and the boat was being rocked to and fro, the wind's going crazy. And, you know, now these guys were fishermen. They knew how to swim. But they were out there too deep, Alex. And they're like, oh, we're not used to this. Oh, oh, he just asleep. He wants us to perish. We're going to die. That's what you say, right? You see your bank account. Oh, Lord, it's over. Lord, you don't care about my bank account. Look, I don't got no money. God, COVID out here. Got me out here stuck. Not getting no stimulus check. No loan money. No unemployment benefits. <laughs> Do you see? Do you see? And what did Jesus tell us? Don't worry about your life. What are you going to eat? What, are you, what you worry all the time? <laughs> he told you not to worry. <laughs> Do you see? He's asleep. Why, why didn't they lay down and go to sleep like him? He was their master. The woman of God said, Jesus only said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Jesus is at rest because God was at rest. Because God was at risk. God wasn't freaking out about the winds and the waves. But you're freaking out about it. He didn't get up because of the winds. Well, he got up because they were crying out to him. The very thing that was the dangerous thing, Jesus was asleep. But when they started crying, he got up. He didn't get up because of trouble. He got up because they cried. And with the waves and water hitting his face, he said what to them? Where is your what? Faith. Not where the buckets are to get the water out. Where's the umbrella? I don't know if they had them back then. Do you see? And well, that's what y'all do every day. God, you don't care. You don't care, God. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I gave. I'm with the church on Easter and Christmas this year. Nothing. <laughs> if you sow sparingly, you what? Read sparingly. Do you see? If you draw near to him, he will what? Draw near to you. It's all there. It's not a mystery. Do you see? So, and he said, where is your faith? It's like, and then he said, what? 
peace, be still. And the winds and waves calm down. And they was like, what man, man is this? That even the winds and the waves look at him. He's God. And, but he, but he, he told something to him. He said, where is your faith? Why didn't y'all handle this? <laughs> okay. A lot of y'all are looking for God to do something for y'all. Mm -mm. Why did he give you his spirit? Why did he give his, why did he give you his authority if you're waiting for him? He said, he said what in Luke 10, 19? What? That I have authority of all the, all the, what the enemy does, right? You should tread upon serpent, on scorpion, right? Right? And I'll give you all, all authority of all what the enemy does, and nothing by no means shall hurt you, right? But that's what, so he gave you authority to do what? To keep crying out to him? Amen. To exert it. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So I want to share this revelation about, about the rest of God. All right. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, we're going to go there. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, New King James Version. And it says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, the last Adam, was made a life-giving spirit. I'm going to read that again. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay? Then the last Adam, which was who? Jesus, was made a life-giving spirit. So what Paul was referring to, uh, Adam being made a living soul, um, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we'll go there real quick, okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, New King James verses. okay? And it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul okay so we have two natures in us the living soul nature but when we see christ uh we have a life-giving nature do, do you understand so you have the nature of the first adam and the last adam working in you in tandem does that make sense? So sometimes you're like, God help me, I don't get it, I don't get it. And then sometimes you're like, oh no, devil, you're going to let this person go. Because see, one received and the other one what? Gave. That's why it's more blessed to give than to because you pass from death to life. Now you are a life-giving spirit. So when you speak someone healed, it happens. When you speak someone free, it takes place. When you speak someone blessed, they become that because you are a life-giving spirit. So it's up to you to speak into these things. Do you see that? <laughs> okay, so listen to this. John chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. John chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him. Yet to all, listen to this, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. You're born of God. Do you see? Now, what does that mean to be born of God? What does that mean to be born of God? What does that mean to be born of God? In his family. Your origin, your essence now is God. Your source is God. You are the lineage of God now. Why do you think you put on the arm of God? That's, that's a sign of sheer victory. God's infinity in O the last time I checked. So when you put on the armor of God, you're suiting up to win. You're putting on your daddy's clothes to win. I remember um, there was Jesus. Jesus came to visit me in a dream one time and knocked me out like crazy. My pastor told me that he was going to visit me. He came to visit me in a dream, and I I saw him and just light. And I just in the dream I couldn't stand up. I was I was dead. I was like it's crazy. 
So I, I, I passed out, and then another part of the dream, I kind of I kind of woke up in the dream, not physically, but in the dream. And then he showed up again. We were going on a, I saw us on this, uh, the people I was at the time, we were on this uh, bus we were in Haiti on a mission trip before we went. And then he showed up in the middle of the bus, I fell out again, <laughs> just hit the ground. I just remember, like, you know how you see the camera drop to the ground, and just, that was me, just, just boom, just, just dropping both times. And I just remember feeling power, just raw power. Like, I felt like if he were to move his finger or thumb or something wrong, everything in the universe would be annihilated. Like, he was, it was crazy. And when I had that encounter with him, it changed my life. I'm like, he's real. He is real. And until you had that experience, an encounter with Christ, you, you, you're just a religious person. You need an encounter with God. You need it. Paul had it. Disciples had it. We need it. You'll stop second guessing these things. Do you see? So in Isaiah 26, 3, he said, you will keep him in perfect peace who might have stayed on you because he trusts in you. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed on him because you trust in him. You have to stay your mind on God. And when you have that kind of fellowship with him, you start to release and understand the mind of God. When you stay your mind on God, that peace, do you see? Okay. Okay. So in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, um, NIV version. We're going to go through that. I'm going to talk about that rest now. God gave us the Sabbath rest. Do you understand that? It's a supernatural rest that God is giving you. And I want to help you guys understand. So this is one key I want to give you guys today. I want to leave you guys with today, okay? I want to, I want to help you understand what God is really giving you, how to access it, okay? All right? So Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, NIV. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in, their, in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had, begin, he, had, he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Somebody say rested. rested. He rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So after he was done with all his works, he rested. Now, people who are dealing with the nature of the first Adam, they're like, how can a holy God and a perfect God rest? Well, he wasn't resting from exhaustion. Who said he was exhausted? He was done. Listen to this. Spirits, it, it, God is trying to tell us something. Rest is very important. Spirits need rest. Hear what I'm telling you. Listen to this. Spirits need rest. Okay? You're a spirit also. Right? Okay? So, okay, Matthew 12, 43. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, New King James Version. Matthew 12, 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking, 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 uh, seeking rest. But he can't find it. Dry places, meaning he's looking, meaning everywhere he went when he left the person, it was dead, lifeless, waterless. Waterless means life. Water means life. He was seeking rest. And remember, the demonic spirits are a copycat of the spirit of God. Listen to what I'm telling you. I want you to catch what I'm telling you. Spirits need rest. It says it right here. Seeking what? Rest. Somewhere where it's, they can live, there's life. Because they can only function here when they have a body. Do you see? And finds none. Okay? All right. So listen to this. All right. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. 
Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. This is the ESV verse, but I think it says it in all. Okay, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, ESV. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. <laughs> now it's about to get interesting. It's about to get really interesting right now. I hope y'all catch this. I hope y'all catch this. I, so, I pray to God y'all catch what I'm about to teach y'all. Stay awake. Listen to this. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now, why is this important for you and me to understand? Why, why am I pointing this out to you? Because there's something that God did for you that you have not laid hold of yet. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 through 10. New King James Version. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 through 10. New King James. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, God has promised you his own rest, his own Sabbath. A Sabbath is not no longer the day you observe during the week. It's all spiritual now. Jesus said to hate your brother is what? Murder. To look at someone, a woman with lust is what? Adultery. This thing is spiritual now. So a Sabbath is no longer the Sundays and Saturdays that we do. It's still recognized by the Jewish customs, and that's okay if you want to celebrate that, but he's, it's a spiritual thing. Do you see? Life-giving spirit. It's spiritual now. Do you understand? So this rest doesn't come on once a week. Do, all right, back to the script. So therefore, since a promise remains, listen to this, remains of entering his rest, let us fear at least any of you seem to have come short of it. I talk to people all the time who have no peace, but they're full of it. Who have no joy, but full of joy. Who have no rest, but full of rest. Have a bank account full of, fully loaded and broke. It's a promise. You have the Sabbath, not just any rest, the rest of God. God's rest dwells in you. You with me, Don? I know you with me, Don. For, for indeed, the gospel was preached. Listen to this. The gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. It's true, but it didn't profit them. Conditions. Not being mixed with what? Faith in those who heard it. That's why I'm urging you guys to listen to me. Pay attention. Because you're struggling with things you shouldn't be struggling with. You don't have peace that God has already given you. Crying out to God for what you already have. For we have believed do enter that rest, as he said. So I swore in my wrath they should not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. God ain't done nothing since he finished creation. He's been on break ever since then. When Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. He wasn't talking about the Father in heaven. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm promising you this. He will come to be with you guys. And he'll take what's mine and make it known to you. He was talking about the Holy Ghost. Not God the Father. God ain't done nothing since then. Amen, Pastor. Do you see? So since therefore it remains that some must enter... And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today, after such a long time as it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Verse 8, for if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his.
all this toiling, struggling, it's wrong. It's wrong. Love my wife is the easiest thing to do now. Pastoring is the easiest thing for me to do now because I've entered that race. Not because it doesn't come with challenges. I'm not saying my marriage is perfect. I'm not saying my finances are perfect or that I, I lead perfect people. I say it because I've entered that rest. Do you see? So you can walk into a situation that's chaotic, that's out of control, and be at rest. <laughs> listen, listen to this. So meaning when you enter this rest, life ceases to stop being a struggle, a mystery, a lie, fearful. People don't want to wake up the next day. They want to face the next day. They're terrified of it every day because of what's coming, what they're anticipating. Do you see? Am I talking? Okay. So Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, okay? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. NIV. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who's coming to Jesus? Are you at rest? Who's coming to Jesus? Are you at rest? Who's coming to Jesus? Are, okay, I'm going to take y'all through the prayer of salvation here in a little bit. <laughs> Who's come to Christ? Then are you at rest? Who's come to Jesus? Then are you at rest? Yes. See, you won't, you won't say it because your circumstance won't allow you to. Your problems and your idols in your life won't allow you to. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh so is what? He. Amen. See, you, 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 you won't say it. And you're empowering that which has already been done for you to, to take a hold of you. Right? This day, life or death, right? Yeah. By your words, you either justify to condemn your words. We either ensnare you or free you. Your words. Who's in Christ? Okay. So take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find for your, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see? All right. Last scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 10. Look at this. And, and this is Paul, right? With a thorn in his, in his, in his flesh. And least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I be exalted above measure. So meaning he had all these revelations and proud potentially developing him and this, and this messenger came in to keep him humble. Whether it was a physical thing or person or whatever, but it kept him humble, okay? And then concerning this thing, I pleaded, look at this. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Meaning he's like, God, please. Ouch, you're still there. God, come on, God. I'm an apostle. I can't be sick. I got to go heal your people. How can I go heal your people and be sick? Come on, God. The devil's attacking me. Get him off. I'm being tortured. I'm your servant. This shouldn't be happening. Ouch, it's still, God, come on, please. Come on, God. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Why isn't it lifting? Why isn't it changing? I can't go out and do this like this. Come on. I've I, I seen heaven. I've been up there. But I'm sick. And Jesus, and, and yes, and God said, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul got a revelation. He was like, oh, 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 therefore, most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities 
that the power of Christ may what? Rest upon me. See, the Holy Spirit can't rest on you because you're not at rest. You're always complaining. Always struggling. Always lying. Always angry. And that's why sometimes it works and it doesn't. You pray it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's inconsistent. He can't rest on you. Spirits need rest. The Holy Spirit wants to rest in you. He said he will come and make his home within you. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? But he can't reside there. Because anger is there. Unforgiveness is there. Jealousy is there. He can't rest in that. And that's why the other spirit comes and attack you. They can rest in that. They like that. That's why God says, put these things away from you. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought, I reasoned, I spoke as a child. But when I came a man, I put away childish things. You have to put it away. And he can't rest there until you decide to put it away. That's why you're struggling. That's why you don't have. And the enemy is robbing you, taking from you. And you're allowing him to because your heart is a heart, your disobedience. Do you see? The Spirit wants to find rest in each and every one of you guys. Let him. He wants to rest there. Do you know what it means for the Holy Spirit to rest on you? Do you understand that? It comes with the seven spirits of God. I don't lack anything. Because he rests on me. I create an environment where the Holy Spirit can rest on me. So when offenses come in my marriage, I give it up. When I forgive someone comes to somebody coming against me, I let it go. Because I don't want the Holy Spirit to not find rest with me. I need him. I can't do this without him. I'm not going to do this up here without him. People come up here and do this without the spirit. Uh-uh. Not me. Not me. Not me. Dangerous. Very dangerous guy. She said, the spirit of God is upon me. He's anointed me to. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He said, he's upon me. Do you see? And you have to, to, to come to that place of rest. So the spirit can rest upon you. And then that's when the works come up. In the Amplified Version in, in John um, 16, 14 says he's a standby. He's a standby. The Holy Ghost. He's ready. He's rested up and ready. But you got to give him an environment where he can rest. Amen. Stand with me. Stand with me. I want to pray for you guys. I want to pray for you. That you set your mind on God. No matter what's coming. No matter what's happened. Do you understand? I have gone through a lot of tragedies in my life. A lot. We can swap horror stories. But I tell you. The power of God is real. But you have to do what it says. By faith. Why do you think all this takes place here? Because God likes me? No. Because I have a relationship with him that, go, that transcends the things of this world. I've given up everything for him. Do you see? And I'm trying to help you guys understand that. What is keeping you from fully surrendering to God? What's already in you. You will live a victory, victorious life. You will. You will. I told you what Jesus did in, in, in hell. Guess what? You did it too. The Bible says we died with him. We were raised with him. Guess what? You were in hell whooping the devil too. If you scared of devils at night, instead of go to sleep. Ready to go to sleep at night. Dealing insomnia. You see? 
but you've already defeated all of hell. <laughs> Do you know why I don't flinch when devils show up? Because I know who I am. Greater is he that is what? In me than he who is what? In the world. You better believe that. Do you see? God has given us something amazing, God. But we're not fully benefiting from it. Do you understand? So, Father, right now, I thank you for your people. Lord, I thank you for this word. Father, I, I pray that your people will lay hold of the rest that you've given them, God. God, no longer will they wait and see before they thank you, before they proclaim what's true, according to your word. Father, you said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will always remain. So, Father, I pray they, record, they will live according to your word, by your spirit. So, Father, let our minds be renewed. Let us put away slander and gossip and, and negative talking, God, because we're born of you, God. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I thank that your people walk out, out of here knowing who they are and putting a demand on the anointing to work for them in their lives, God. That those who are jobless will no longer say they're jobless. That those who are homeless will no longer say they're homeless. That those who are in broken relationships will no longer say they're, they're broken. Thank you, Lord, because all things are theirs. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, show them through your spirit how to apprehend what's been promised and already given to them and deposited them. Lord, I thank you that you've shown me how to do this. And so, Father, I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters, God, they will lay hold of the reality of that which you've given them, Father. They will be at rest, supernatural Sabbath, every day of the week. So, Father, I bless them now. Father, I come against every attack of the enemy. Father, I come against every sickness in this room. I come against every uh, lack and shortage in this room. Father, I come against every stronghold of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we set fire to every contract the enemy has placed out in our lives and the lives of our family and their futures right now. Father, I rebuke fear. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke aversion. Father, I rebuke the spirit of condemnation. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I pray they would keep their focus on you. Because you said in your word that you would keep him in perfect peace who mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I bless them now, Father God. God, we love you. We thank you so much for this day. Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all give God a hand of praise. <laughs> praise God.